My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on this show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey folks, welcome back. Today we got a special guest who's doing something a little bit different in the multifamily space and in syndication. And that's because our guest Scott Kitchener, Kirchner, sorry, zooming in from Minneapolis, Minnesota, is a real estate entrepreneur who focuses on multifamily properties, bigger deals, but in smaller towns and more rural areas. And I know a lot of the guests that I've had on the show over the years, especially syndicators and, and people doing bigger deals, want to really focus on big cities, the Dallas's, the Houston's, the Tampa's of the world, the Charlotte, North, North Carolina's. But a lot of people don't look at or get scared off by the idea of doing big deals in small towns. So Scott, looking forward to digging into this. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me today and warm introduction. Yeah, my pleasure. So give us a little snapshot of what real estate investing looks like for you. What's the portfolio? Uh, what kind of properties? How many units under contract or under management or ownership? That sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So I currently have just under 300 units, about 287 or 291. I can never remember, but just under 300 units, all multifamily with the exception of one short-term rental. Um, only because we live in Minnesota and it gets cold and snows here. So my wife and I wanted a place in Southwest Florida to get to. So what better than an Airbnb? Um, but yeah, I've got I get, I'm Canadian. I get it. I yeah, understand. Exactly. Right. <laughs> we got to get out of the cold. Uh, the holidays are great, but you hit February and it is the dark, uh, descent of winter. Right. And we got to get out. So yeah. aside from that, like I said, everything is, uh, about 300 units of multifamily, all based here in Minnesota, currently exploring a couple other markets, but I love buying in my own backyard. Um, I know the playground equipment and it serves me well. So I like that. I like that. I also love the fact that um, you got it. We don't spend a lot of time on the backstory, but I do want to touch on like you come from a cool back. You got a cool backstory, way cooler <laughs> than mine. Like you were literally a SWAT police officer. That was your profession before you got into this. So what made you make the leap from? Policing to real estate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I spent about 15 years in law enforcement. That's what my degree is in. Um, so for anyone out there who has a degree in a completely unrelated field to real estate, um, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can make the jump. Um, it's all good. You don't need a, a degree in real estate to be a successful real estate entrepreneur. But yeah, I spent 15 years in law enforcement. Genuinely just loved what I was doing. I loved the people that I worked with. Um, I was on the traffic unit. As you mentioned, I was a SWAT officer until... The day I, I retired. And um, yeah, I, I genuinely enjoyed it. I unfortunately I went to a few calls, uh, young, young kids suicides, and I had a young family at home and still have young kids here at home right now. But um, it just it, it kind of changed my perspective for anyone that's a parent out there, they can relate to the perspective change that you have in life when you start to have your own children. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went to a few calls that were pretty gruesome in that nature and uh, back to back. And I just said, you know, this isn't it for the next 30 years. There's a sweet pension and everything, but this just, this isn't going to be it for the next 30 years. Um, and I'd always had an interest in real estate, specifically multifamily. And I just kind of said, all right, why not now? I've spent five years putting my money in other people's deals. Why don't I just start to do this? So that was kind of the unfortunate impetus that uh, that launched me into real estate, but I'm I'm thankful for the opportunity. So. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, now let's let's dig into the nuts and bolts. I understand the concept of liking to invest in your backyard. Tell me a little bit about what you like and why you like investing in, in apartment buildings in small areas. And give us an idea of what does small look like to you? What, what does that mean? Like small yeah. markets? You know, it all varies. I mean, one market I'm in, uh, it is a town of 2000 people. However, that's pretty small, but there's a federal prison there. And so there's a lot of good employment odds are the prison system probably on a federal level isn't just going to close up shop and be gone. So we, uh, you know, we have a lot of workforce housing and that's what I like about the smaller towns is workforce housing. So that one, it's about, you know, a town of 2000 people. I go about an hour and a half up the freeway closer to Duluth, mm -hmm. um, Minnesota. And I'm in another city that's about 12,000 people. 
That one is, it's about a 20 minute drive from Duluth, which is a population of over a hundred thousand. So it's maybe, you know, a little smaller off the cuff, but when you realize the grand scheme of it and people commuting 20 minutes to Duluth is not out of question, it's, it's got a little bigger population size there, but I mean, anywhere from down to 2000 up to, up to 15, 16,000 is kind of small town. Okay, cool. And why do you like those markets versus let's say looking for properties right in Minneapolis? Yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, it comes down to just sheer competition and barrier to entry, right? I can give you an example. I was looking at a uh, about a 150 unit deal, probably a $20 million deal here a few months ago um, in a great market, great location, late country of Minnesota. And, and they had no national competition. Um, and we, we had a bid on it. We were just about a million under the winning bid. But the broker flat out told me, he's like, I talked to any national buyer. This is a $20 million deal. And the response is, I can't get a direct flight there. Like I got to fly into Minneapolis and rent a car and drive two hours. I don't want to do that. So it eliminates some of the larger competition, the national buyers that are coming into the Midwest from the coast with frankly, just silly money that they're like, oh, I'll pay that for that. And you're like, really? Are you nuts? Uh, it takes out that competition. And, you know, I'm looking at things that I'm buying at 50 to 60,000 a door. Um, and when I can push rents and professionally manage them, the value grows exponentially, um, which is, you know, the case study of one I'm refinancing right now today. Nice, 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 nice. So what I'm hearing is two things. Number one, way less competition because the big guys are too lazy to get there and too scared and just think they have to be in the big markets one flight away. And number two, price point. They're way, way cheaper than equivalent properties in bigger markets. So let's dive into a little bit about rent roll differentiation there. So if you can focusing on your market, so let's say, you know, I don't know, an equivalent sized building in Minneapolis versus one of these smaller centers outside of the city. What are they like? I don't know if, if your average units are two bedrooms, one bedroom studios, mix of all of those. What what are the rent differences differences there? Yeah, so I can I can give you two comparisons. So yeah. I closed in March of this year. We closed a, a seventy one unit deal here in the Twin Cities. Um, it's right it's in, right in Minneapolis. Okay. Yeah, it's a suburb of the Minneapolis, like yeah. ten minutes out of Minneapolis. Um, and we're doing a full value add, so it's full renovation. But we're getting for our one bedrooms there, we are getting uh, twelve seventy five a month, and two bedrooms we're getting fourteen seventy five a month. Okay, so then so I that's take big city. That's big city. So then I take yeah. you out to my my uh, thirty six unit deal in the town of two thousand. I'm getting 1375 for my three bedrooms there. Um, and it, it, low 1200s for a two bedroom, one bedrooms are right around 1100. Um, so there's a difference, but it's not substantial to be honest no. with you. And the, and the price difference per door between Minneapolis and those, give us an idea of what that is. I think you're saying 40 or 50 grand a door for the yeah, small so, town ones and then yeah so that small the in that example the the 36 unit deal we bought that for 52,000 a door back in 2019 the one okay. i just bought in minneapolis by the time we factor in our cost to renovate it we bought it for about 92 a door but after we do all our renovations and everything our total basis will be about 115,000 a door so over nearly double over double on a mm -hmm. cost per unit basis there yeah well, mm -hmm. 2019, that's a while ago now. So price points, how about, what are you what are you seeing for the price points per door in these small towns these days? Yeah, it, they're still uh, shifting. You know, I just bought uh, about 14 months ago now, I bought a 56 unit deal. Mm -hmm. um, it is section eight, but it's coming out of the section eight contract this year. So um, there's a lot of runway there, but that one we closed right around 50,000 a door as well. Okay. Um, so it's depending on, you know, my 36 unit, we've increased the rent roll, we've increased efficiencies, the value of that property has been driven through the roof because of our operational efficiencies and rent growth. Mm -hmm. But when you find the properties in the smaller towns that have mom and pop operation, or maybe just mismanagement, and yeah. you can come in and put effective management in place that reduces expenses, and you can catch up, not even push the barrier on the rents, but just get them up to the true market rate. Um, that's where you can see that growth uh, on, you know, your own valuation. Now, I don't know anything about rules and regulations in uh, Minnesota, but are you able to raise the rents to market rate on existing tenants or is that only like on turnover? Yeah, we don't have any statewide rent control. It's mm -hmm. been talked about, it's been discussed. 
Um, St. Paul, uh, one of our major cities, right? St. Paul, Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, right? St. Paul put rent control into effect a few years ago, and it has been a complete debacle. Um, so I feel like a lot of um, policymakers hopefully are watching from the sidelines and seeing what's happening in St. Paul and saying, you know, sounds yeah. good on paper, but not a great idea. But it's not it's not an issue for the properties that you're buying. OK, no, that's good. No. That's good news. Yeah. Um, very, very cool. So. I imagine that raising capital is a big part of what you're doing to be bringing down these bigger deals. What uh, what does that look like for you? What kind of investors are you are you, are you looking at? And and tell us a little bit about that side of the business. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do bring in limited partners on each deal. I do you know the five or six C um, public raises where we can talk about them on LinkedIn and everything. So um, I've kind of started to grow that even this year as well. And how I'm reaching out to my investors and such. Where mm -hmm. I've found my biggest opportunity is just with business owners. I feel like you talk to any syndicator and they're like doctors and lawyers. Yeah, sure. They're high income earners. We all know that. Right. Yeah. But there is a niche of business owners who, you know, the guy that owns an industrial manufacturing place that does 20 million gross revenue a year. Right. That is a half hour out of the, the metropolitan area. He's like, yeah. yeah, I'd love to get into real estate, but I'm running a shop here. I got no idea how to do it. Um, there, there's a big untapped well there that I feel like people are missing in my opportunity. So in my opinion, and that's, that's kind of what I've put a lot of my effort into this year is networking smart. with other entrepreneurs. Nice, smart. That makes a lot of sense. Now you've got a lot of different properties. Well, I'm not sure how many different properties do you have in different markets right now? Not, not counting the, the Airbnb, but like the multifamilies. Um, I've got two in Duluth, uh, Two in uh, Cloquet, one there, so two, four, five, six. Uh, we've got seven different properties right now. Okay, so seven different properties in a variety of different towns, all within uh, Minneapolis, yep. or sorry, all within Minnesota, I mean. Property management, do you self-manage? Do you have third-party management? What do you guys do for that? Yeah, I third-party manage it. I've got uh, three professional management companies that I work with here, um, two primarily that I focus on. Um, and I've got a great relationship with them and that that's who I utilize. I'm, I've always, you know, people always ask me, why don't you do your own, you know, vertical integration and bring in your own property management? I said, because it's ineffective until you have like a thousand units, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And the other side of it is every time I talk to one of those property management companies, they're like, ah, sorry, been busy in interviews. I lost a regional manager and two maintenance techs. It's every single time. And I'm like, I don't want to deal with the revolving door of running a property management company. So I outsource it. Yeah. Any challenges? Like you've, you've got that property in that really small town of 2000. Is, is that like a satellite office of your property manager? I'm just trying to get my head around, like who's managing that in that tiny town. Yeah. So luckily it's on the interstate straight up to Duluth and we've got I myself and they also have properties in Duluth. So the regional manager can stop in here and there, but we just have a tenant on site that mm -hmm. when a unit comes available, she deals with the showings and stuff. Um, and that's how we do it. We found a local handyman guy that's got his own lawn mowing business and everything. And we just said, Hey, can we put you on the payroll as needed? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. So when something breaks, we call him and say, Hey, Drew, we need this fixed. Um, and it, it's been a really cheap way to do it. It's been very effective, but it's saved us a lot of overhead costs as well. Oh, for sure. I know that's wonderful. Yeah. Cool stuff, Scott. So moving ahead the next 12, 18 months, what are the plans? What are the goals? What are the aspirations? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously buy more buildings, right? Uh, it's kind of always the goal, um, but making sure that they meet within my criteria, right? I, I'm not I always tell people I want the next building, but I don't need it. So mm -hmm. um, I refuse to put a number of units on my my growth or goal strategy for the next 12 months because I have certain metrics that my investors are looking for and I'm looking for. And the reality is, is if it meets the criteria, I'll write an offer and, and that's where I'll be at on my price. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, so um, aside from that, I'm working on scaling back up my mentorship opportunities as well. Um, I really want to come from a place of service to others who are looking to get into real estate investing. Um, and I want to offer value there to others that are looking to learn. Very cool. Well, as we wrap up, Scott, if people want to connect with you, find out more about uh, what you're up to, where can they go? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on Facebook as Scott Kirchner, as well as LinkedIn uh, and Instagram as uh, mid-sized multi guy, because that's kind of my niche. I like 
I like the mid-size stuff. I like the 40 to about 150 units type of stuff. So I like that mid-size multi-guy. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, thanks very much for being on the show. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great connecting with you and chatting here. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit MoneyPartnerFormula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.